Hi, this is world champion Guillaume Matignon. Welcome to the Magic Show. Welcome to the Magic the Gathering World Championships for 2010. This year's class of the Pro Tour Hall of Fame is completely unique in the history of this institution. For the first time since the class's creation, all three players being inducted are active and playing at the top of their field. All three players being inducted this weekend have a Pro Tour top eight over the last two seasons, and two of those have culminated in trophy shots. From the Netherlands, from Snapfangers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the United States, Brian Kebler. <laughs> from France, Gabrielle Nassif. I think every format should have a best next so that there's something that you can focus on, like something that you need to fight. I think it matters a lot which deck is the best deck. If it's a, if it's a very fast combo or a very good control deck, I think when those decks are the best decks, the format just feels less fun. People have less fun showing up. I would say it should have a tier of best decks, whether that's two or three decks or one deck. Um, I think it's changing in point time. I think that like, the best tier should be there, and a lot of times it will just be one deck just based on people how much time they put in the format and how many what cards get restricted and stuff. Like I, I think it has to be non-interactive, it has to be not fun, it, it makes people not show up to tournaments, basically. Yeah, all the cards in the ban list will probably fit that description. If it's in a deck that is so overpowered individually that it just takes over a format, and, and if you can't find an answer. I think it needs to be pervasively format warping. And what I mean by that is, I think, so pervasive meaning it's in most of the decks, or most of the best decks. So if to play a competitive deck, you need to be playing with this card. Um, I think it also needs to be format shaping or format defining. Accelerate the power of the deck beyond any of its competitors. I've never felt like any cards had to be banned, even when like Skull Clamp was the year. I guess it was like bad for the game, maybe, since everyone had to play. But it's still like kind of interesting, like creates a meta game. And... Unfun to the point of people not liking Magic. It needs to be dominant to the point it needs to be dominant and difficult to answer. It's not enough to be all over the place or too powerful, it has to be both. It has to be all over the place and way too powerful. Because Tarmogoyf goes one, and I guess Mystical I think was the other, but I think when you combine the two, that's when you have problems. the sentence for me. Drafting Infect is... Awesome. Terrible. The best thing ever. The Nutlow. Awesome. Lame. Dishy. Way too good and I want to do it all the time. A gamble. It takes a lot of testicular fortitude. If you're drafting Infect, I hope you're really happy with just getting like four playables a pack because that's very likely to happen, so. Drafting Infect is miserable. I don't like strategies where you have to commit so early in the draft and if you end up getting cut or it ends up not working out, your deck is just abysmal. I think it's the best deck in the format. When you have the best Infect deck, you usually have the best deck at the table, but when it falls apart, it just 
putters around and it's awful. Drafting is definitely more fun than playing against it. I'll say that much at least. Like when you're drafting, you're like, yeah, my fourth plague stinger. And then you sit down and you play against a guy with four plague stingers. You're like, I hate you and I hate magic. Before playing Scars Limited, I wish I knew how good. Oh man, lights. Wall of Tangle Cord. Wall of Tangle Cord. Wall of Tangle Cord. It's basically a prison term that gives you metalcraft. Mm. It just is always stopping your opponent's biggest creature. It's always giving you the time you need to set up, and it's an artifact, so it automatically makes it better than most of the cards in the set. I wish I knew how good Tumble Magnet was. Sky is cool. Contagion Clasp. It's my favorite card. It's just it looks it looked good, but it's actually awesome. I wish I knew how good a quarter shield was. I had it lower down in the hierarchy of equipment, you know, early on, and now I think it's you know it's, it's one of the better ones. I wish I knew how good Perilous Mirror was. We found out pretty quickly. It only took a few weeks, but that card was going super late. Liquid Metal Coating. It didn't seem to do anything at first, but it turned out to be quite good depending on your deck. The Hall of Fame is fantastic. Uh, it was great watching all these old clips of, of, of me playing and people talking about, you know, riff and everything. It was, it was, it was great to also have my brother here uh, mm. for the Hall of Fame ceremony. I, I flew him out as my, you know, plus one that I got. Great, obviously. I don't think it will change much for what I'll be doing since I'll still be playing all the pro tours. It's, it's great, especially since my community supported it so much. Feels pretty good. Not really different, actually, but the ceremony was really nice and getting the ring and listening to like the little stuff, the video they prepared and all those night, like all those people say, saying nice things about me, it was, it was nice. I like to compare Scars of Mirrodin to the first 10 minutes of a horror film. Where like, you come in the film and everything seems nice and then someone goes, wow, something's kind of weird. Should I worry about it? And someone else goes, nah, don't worry about it. And, and you, the audience, are going, no, no, don't worry about it. This is a problem. I don't worry about it. So if you look through the flavor text and stuff, like all these people in Mirrodin are going like, wow, well, something weird's going on. And I think my, my husband, you know, he's acting strange. And like everybody's just in denial. That's like, well, I'm sure it's okay. You know, and then so Mirror and the Siege is kind of like, you know, once you, like the first act happens, you're like, oh no, something weird, something weird, weird is happening. Oh my god, we're in trouble, you know. I think standards. State of standard is. Standard is like. The reason power creep keeps going is because the power creep's not dangerous. I, I think if, as long as. Here's the big thing on power creep is. To me, it feels it feels a little bit too much like. From that perspective, I, I don't think it's extended anymore. It's just, in theory, it should, but the. Uh, the Manion Nelson challenge. <laughs> How did you do this? I don't know. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thanks. We'll see that in Paris. Never been. No. <laughs> I've come early. It doesn't get... matter that much. There is no money on the line, just the pride. Yeah, and I want it. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I would like it. <laughs> like the fatties.